All right, hey y'all. So this is a periodicity test, uh, 40 marks. I have a periodic table covering the other half of this, but don't worry about it. We're just gonna use it in the beginning. So I wanna make sure you have it available. Uh, this test, I'm just gonna have the answers for at least part one, just right up because it's gonna be wild to go through each and every one, but I will show you how to do nitrogen and oxygen and we will watch the trend continue. So starting with nitrogen, in your periodic table, nitrogen's element seven, you can see it right here. The seven in the upper corner represents seven protons. So that's the atomic number. Furthermore, if we look at the electrons, it's also seven. Elements are normally neutral unless otherwise stated as cations or anions. So if they are neutral, that means the number of protons and number of electrons is equal and the charge overall is zero. So therefore, seven positive protons plus seven negative electrons is a neutral atom. All right, the second one is the block. Our periodic table is split into a couple blocks. If we just look at it overall, I can actually highlight the one we have. This is our S block. That's, oops, this is our T block. Whoops, or sorry, D block. Whoops, let me try that again. This is our D block. This is our P block. And then on the bottom, we have our F block. Now, something to note when we're talking about blocks, helium actually takes place in the S block. So we have S, D, P, and F. All right, so that's the block. This next column is valence electrons. Valence electrons we just find by, for most elements, main group elements meaning elements that are not in the D block or F block, but elements that are in the S block or the P block. These are our main group elements. Now for those, they generally follow this nice easy trend that we have one valence electron, two valence electrons, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, with helium actually having two, because like I said, with blocks, helium is an S block element. Nitrogen is in the P block. It's in the column with five valence electrons. So it has five valence electrons. Next, we go to oxidation state. Now, the oxidation state is usually four main block elements, main group elements, plus one, plus two, plus three. Generally, variable oxidation state. Don't worry about it. We can calculate it. Minus three, minus two, minus one and zero. Oxidation state requires bonds to be formed, and noble gases do not form bonds. So uh, also, I actually kind of wrote it backwards. Technically, you're supposed to do one plus, two plus. Like, unlike math, kind of the opposite, you put the signs after. All right, moving over to oxygen. Oxygen right next to nitrogen is element eight, meaning it has eight protons, eight electrons, it is still in the P block right next to nitrogen, but now it is in the sixth group. Being in the sixth group, it has six valence electrons, and it generally has an oxidation state of two minus. We'll move on to osmium because it encompasses the D block elements. Osmium right over here has 76 protons, therefore 76 electrons and the D block. With D and F blocks, the oxidation states, well, with D block elements, the oxidation states can change as can the valence electrons. So we don't actually have a nice trend. So I just kind of leave those blank right here. You'll notice that for D block and if I gave you an F block element, you just would not put an answer there. All right, here is the remainder of these up to calcium. If you want to look at it and take your time to go through it, you can pause right now. I'm gonna move on to the next problem. So. Which of the elements in the chart is the most electronegative? Which is the least electronegative? Well, I gave you fluorine, and fluorine has the highest electronegativity of 4, um, or 3.9, depending on the table you're looking at. Fluorine is the most electronegative, so fluorine is most. In this group, uh, looking at it, you have your periodic table with all your general trends, but electronegativity generally goes down to the left. Now we have osmium, but we also have calcium, which is kind of weird because calcium's more left, but osmium's more down. But because you have all the values in front of you, calcium you see is the least. So it's calcium least. 
its electronegativity. So fluorine is four, elect uh, calcium is about one. All right, which elements are gases? This one, if we look at a periodic table, and mine actually has some colors on it, and I should erase some of the stuff. Or you know what? Better idea, just get a new periodic table. All these yellow ones here are gases. Along with, or sorry, these are non-metals. I said gases, but what I meant to say is non-metals. Out of the non-metals, a lot of them are gases. You kind of have to just know that at least our diatomic elements, Hoffenbergel, hydrogen, oxygen, fluorine, iodine, nitrogen, bromine, and chlorine are all gases. From our list specifically, um, all the noble gases are gases, so noble gases are going to be there. Argon, that's kind of why they're called the noble gases. Oxygen from Hoffenbergel, nitrogen from Hoffenbergel, and fluorine from Hoffenbergel are all gases. So those are going to be all the gases on your list. Which elements are transition metals? Those are going to be our middle block, our D block. So our transition metals here are silver, gold, chromium, and osmium. Those are all metals, which are likely the three smallest. Atoms get smaller as we move up into the right, smaller. So our three smallest are going to be fluorine, nitrogen, and oxygen. Now, you might say, well, what about argon? It's also pretty far to the right. But priority actually goes where each energy level, as you go up, it gets way smaller than if you go to the right. This is way smaller. And this is kind of smaller. And that's because as we move down, we are literally adding another ring of electrons, another energy level, new energy level. All right. Which are three likely biggest elements? So on the opposite end of that trend, the ones farthest down here are the biggest. And in our case, that's going to be osmium, silver, or gold, and silver. All right. Moving forward. Would calcium have a would calcium two plus have a higher or lower ionization energy than uh, neon? Now, if we look at our periodic table, again, I'm just going to bring myself a new one, and I'll probably keep doing that. Calcium, uh, neon, I should start with neon, not calcium. Neon is right over, neon is right over here on the periodic table. Calcium, when it gets oxidized one spot, then another spot, it kind of looks like argon. Now, we would normally say that it would be neon because it's higher to the right, neon. And you can explain because of the trend, higher to the right. And that would give you an answer. But if you want to take a risk, you could also say calcium two plus. Now the truth is it wouldn't be correct, but if you said calcium two plus because it loses an energy level, or has a higher uh, Z effective, effective nuclear charge, or that it's a cation. And normally cations are smaller and therefore have higher ionization energies. I might consider giving you half a point or half the point, which is out of two. All right, moving on to number one. What is the relative atomic mass of a sample of 70% chlorine 35 and 30% chlorine 37? You do the math and it's 0.7 times 35 plus 0.3 times 37. And when you do that math, you get 35.6. The math is the percent times the mass plus percent times the mass because that's percent abundance. That's like if you had 10 of these and seven of the 10 were 35 mass and three of the 10 were 37 mass, what would the average mass be? Well, that's how you would do the math. All right, which property of elements increases down a group? So it gets bigger, but this way it gets smaller. So atomic radius, yep, already we got the answer. Cool, we're done. 
Number four, what is the IUPAC name of NiCO3? Now, CO3 is carbonate, and carbonate has a charge of 2 minus. So we need something that has a charge of 2 plus to balance it out in a 1 to 1. So it's going to be nickel 2 carbonate. Now, the reason we have the 2 is because nickel is a transition metal. With transition metals and transition elements, we generally state the charge that it has in the compound as a parentheses, Roman numerals, parentheses. All right. Number five, write a balanced chemical equation, including state symbols for the reaction between sodium, Na, solid, because state symbols, and sodium is a solid, and oxygen, O2, gas. It is a diatomic element, and oxygen is a gas, like we breathe every day, to form sodium oxide, NaO, which will also be a solid. So, NaO, we have to figure out, is that correct? Well, oxygen, if we go back to our trend all the way at the top, has a 2 minus oxidation state, while well, sodium in group 1 has a 1 plus. So it turns out we need two sodiums for one oxygen. Cool. Now, last we have to do is balance it. We'll put a 2, and the sodiums are balanced. Awesome. The problem is our oxygens are not balanced, so we actually need a 2 here. But that, unfortunately, then changes the sodium, and I have to change this 2 I originally put to a 4. And there's our balanced chemical equation. All right. Deduce which species has the smallest atomic radius. This will hopefully be the last periodic table I bring in. Uh, sodium. Sodium plus. Magnesium 2 plus or aluminum 3 plus. Whoops. Uh, aluminum 3 plus. When we look at this, sodium has the electron configuration of sodium. When we turn it into sodium plus, it looks like neon with a positive charge. It kind of looks like neon, but you have 11 protons. Magnesium looks like neon with 12 protons. Aluminum 3 plus looks like neon. It looks like neon, but with 13 protons. When we look at these three, neon in terms of electron configuration, so I guess I should use the brackets to symbolize electron configuration, with the most protons, it's going to be the smallest because the nucleus of that is going to pull in the electrons much stronger if it has 13 protons than if it has 12 or 11. So it's going to be aluminum 3+. plus. All right. This one I already have done as well. Name the following compounds. The way you do it when it is a metal, plus non-metal. That's an ionic bond. And we name it by just saying the metal, then the non-metal. Metal, then the non-metal. Metal, then the non-metal. Non you may notice that I actually changed fluorine to fluoride. I changed oxygen to oxide. So with the nonmetal, the nonmetal actually becomes the "-ide version, the suffix. Every nonmetal, when it becomes an anion, a negative ion, becomes "-ide." So that's how you do all the way through J. Now, the change is when we have metal, or the change is when we have nonmetal plus nonmetal. Nonmetal plus nonmetal. You'll notice, first off, the second nonmetal does have ide. The second one, we will change to ide. But we add this thing. We add prefixes. If there's one, we say mono, and that means one. If there's two, we say di, and that means two. If there's three, we would say tri. Uh, four would be tetra. Penta would be five. Hexa, hepta, octa, nana, deca. Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And so we always, for at least the second element, we say 
we put the prefix. For the first element, you only do if it, it's two or more. So what you're going to do is you're going to do, whoops, you're going to put a prefix on the second one and a suffix on the second one. But the first one you do prefix if greater than one element. So what I mean is we have one carbon and one oxygen. So the first one just says carbon. The second one gets the prefix mono and the suffix "-ide". Second one, sulfur, only one of them. So you just name it sulfur, then di and I, dioxide. Now this one has two. So now we have greater than one element. So we're gonna say dinitrogen monoxide, disulfur, Deca fluoride. All right, lastly, coming down to three, cobalt, three oxide. Cobalt is a transition metal. This is transition. So we do the Roman numerals to symbolize its three plus. And we know that because if we look at cobalt, oops, cobalt and oxygen, we can just reverse crisscross two minus three plus. All right. Going backwards from number seven is number eight, aluminum chloride, lithium sulfide. Now these, I have to take the oxidation states, three plus, one minus. So we're going to have three and one. Lithium is one plus, sulfur is two minus. So we're going to have two and one. So you just have to make sure that the charges balance to zero. Charge equals zero for ionic. So anything that is metal and non-metal as described above. And that's how we do it. For again, non-metal and non-metal, we say it carbon dioxide, one carbon, two oxygens, nitrogen dioxide, one nitrogen, two oxygens, sulfur trioxide, one sulfur, three oxygens. That's it. Uh, with this, that's the whole test. Hopefully you got it and have a great day. I will put the test blank in the description as well as this answer key.